Hold a seat at the bar to join us for another episode of McAnally's Pubcast, a podcast exploring the fun and fantastical mind of Jim Butcher's The Dresden Files series. Hosts Tans and Jess and me bring you another round of literary analysis on this immense, immersive, and colorful environment inhabited by Harry Dresden, the world's only licensed private investigator and professional wizard. Join an active and engaged community of new and diehard dedicated fans focused on the fabulous themes, theories, characters, context, lore, and more. This is McAnally's Dresden Files podcast by Free Flow Rambling. Conjure by it at your own risk. McAnally's podcast brought to you by Free Flow Rambling. This is episode 9.22, Meet Meet, where we are covering the novel Summer Night. My name is Tanzan, and I'm joined by Maggie. Hello, hello. And Jess. Echo Mike Alpha. Thank you so much to our Patreon subscribers for your generous support. It's people like you who help us keep doing what we're doing. If you're not yet a Patreon subscriber, sign up today and get a fuck ton of bonus content, kick ass merch, behind the scenes outtakes, and more. Sign up today at patreon.com slash freeflowrambling. Chapter 32. Dresden defends the group using a magical shield that debilitates the Fey horses. Meryl is then struck down by Slate and Fix knocks him out in retaliation. Aurora begins to use the unraveling on Lily at the stone table, but Dresden manages to stop her briefly, only to be detained by one of Aurora's spells and then attacked by one of the riders. So in, in defense of the oncoming slaughter, Dresden drops his blasting rod and uses his staff to produce a low magical shield against the legs of the fey horses. Yeah, so he notices that, like, instantly they all start doing, like, wards and mystical mojo movements and stuff like that, right? And he's like, well, fuck, there's no way I can hold up against all of these very bad guys. Like, they can just zap my stuff like nothing. So he figures, like, a shield, but he's like, uh, that'll just... So, yeah. He's like, but the horses are not doing any warding spells against themselves. So, if I just take out all the horses at the knees... Let's just kick these horses in the shins. Boom. Yeah! This is a sh- uh, like the, the, another time that they get sh- kicked in the shins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the very, very, very first time I ever played D&D ever, uh, I had to, like do like a session zero basically where it's just you and just the dm and you go through like your backstory or whatever like that and how you get to meeting everyone else it was literally the first time i ever played i didn't even realize what like how to read the dice and things like that right and how to play the game and i had like basically i was trying to be rob rob people were trying to rob me while on horses so the first thing i did was shoot for the horses and the dm was like what's wrong with you (laughs) and i was like well i've played video games before Right? Like, similarly, first time I ever played Red Dead Redemption, my horse fell over and I was trying to get back on the horse and I was just pressing A because that's how you get on the horse. In Red Dead Redemption, if your horse dies and if you don't realize it's dead, as I didn't, and you're not reading the screen, when your horse dies, A for ride the horse becomes A for skin the horse. (gasps) Oh! Oh my. So me and my friends, first time ever playing this game, we put it into the machine. I'm playing, I'm going around my turn, my horse falls down a mountain, I try to like get back on the horse. Skins it, shows you a skinned horse, and me and all my friends are just staring in horror at it, like, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> what did you do? And I was like, I don't know. So yeah, anyways, uh, similarly, I totally get uh, how Dresden had the idea to go after the horses. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> so, you know, just like all the old wild westerns and stuff like that, it's like, uh, yeah, and it's pretty effective taking out horses and things like that. So, Tried and true method. Thankfully, this is all fictional, and these are all fictional fey horses, and no actual <laughs> horses were harmed in the making of this novel. So, right. And it was pretty effective, this move. It was I mean, hugely Slate, effective. Slate is brought down. Unfortunately, Talos recovers super quick and then just continues his attack straight on Dresden. Like, yeah, he's oh. just a really fucking annoying, badass high she kind of thing that's all... <laughs> You know, let me just pull up my mystical, magical martial arts moves that are just going to be, yeah. So, yeah, he cannot, he, he, like, instantly, you know, just leaps from his horse as it starts to go down. And it's like, but yeah, but, like, Slate's, because, again, 
it's his just invisible wall of force, right? So there's nothing really to indicate yeah, Slate's that. Slate's a dumb human. He's just a dumb <laughs> human, right? So the horses don't see it, the fairies don't see it, nobody just all of a sudden the horses just start crumpling. And then, of course, they all just start falling and tripping over each other. So there's more madness and mayhem and trampling and just throwing people off kilter and whatever. We've so. all seen Game of Thrones. <laughs> oh, Speak for yourselves. But, uh, yeah. yeah, we've all seen other movies with... Horse trampling? Horse trampling and wars and... So, yes. Very effective. Boom. Takes them all out. Uh, gives the buddies and stuff like that a second to come in and pounce all over and uh, get going on things. Right. Meryl intervenes in the attack. Uh, tell us qu- questions her motives because of her struggles against winter. Yeah, which is fair. I mean, it, I wonder how it was for Meryl to go to Dresden and be like, we've got this big problem. Winter's been harassing my friend Lily. Now Lily's gone missing. And Dresden was like, all right, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to sign up with Team Winter. <laughs> <laughs> like, I could okay. see, like, I understand Meryl went to Harry for Dresden. She's trusting Dresden. And I understand from our point of view and now from Meryl's how we would have trusted him to get to this conclusion. But it is fair to also be like, Bro, I the one people, the one group of people that I was like, can't be on my team, hate these guys, don't want to be them. It's basically like if you grow up your whole life like having this bully, and you become an adulthood, and it's like the guy you marry, like that's his best friend, and you're like, really? We gotta invite him to the wedding. We gotta, he's gotta like come to our house now. Like I hate that guy, right? <laughs> but your husband's like, no, 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 he's like totally changed. He's totally awesome. Blah blah blah. But wasn't wasn't Tristan already yeah. alive? He, he with really him? was like, when she went to like, him. Because like could already smell winter on him. Like so, I would think that maybe yeah, he was because he was a line. I mean, that was yeah. The Mab start got him the first. Book. Mab was, got him first, but yeah. still, it, you know, it's got to be. I, I don't he know. He entrenched himself further in the events of the book than when just Mab was in his office, somewhat threatening him too. Uh, I was gonna say maybe it's one of those kind of like yeah, like your your dickhead family or whatever. Like you know what I mean? Like yeah, you hate them and they suck, but at the same time, like that is your family. You got you know. <laughs> like, I feel like Meryl has a little bit of a reason to hate her family, but <laughs> you know. right, right. <laughs> Right? But Just at the same time, that's, yeah, no, Talk I know. Talk about daddy issues. It, <laughs> right? <laughs> it, it would be, but like you say, um, he was sort of, yeah. right. When well, your his, daddy's family is 50% of the population. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, Dresden has been saying from the start, like, okay, I'm working for Winter, but I'm not with Winter. You know, it's what he was saying to Toot, it's what he was saying to Meryl, it's what he was saying to Mav, it's what he was saying to anybody and everybody that'll listen. And <laughs> Except order. everyone's like, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, well, uh-huh. and I mean, there is that, right? Like, All it's right, like, you say that, but you're working with him, like, you know, but... It, I'm so. not sure you understand how the Fae work, Dresden. <laughs> <laughs> As we've already established clearly time and time again with this, that... Also, just, it doesn't help that he literally has family with Winter through Leah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I can see, I guess, whatever, that I, I guess by the time she was ready to put her, her eggs in that basket and trust him for help, that it might as well just be like, I guess I gotta take you. And they're not really siding with Winter here. I mean, again, they're still just doing it for the main ends of stopping, you know, the war and the insanity that, that Aurora is going with. It just so happens that Winter will back them up on this because they're technically on that side. Yeah, I guess basically, like you say, it's it's... it's they're kind of like the independent sort of Meryl and, and Harry and, and the werewolves, but they have just a slight edge on the wind, you know, I guess that basically, yeah, like, like summer's going to stop them just because summer is summer and they don't know what's going on and it's winter, right? Um, and then winter, again, it's kind of for the same reason. It just so happens that they're like, well, we figure it's for our side. Like we hired him, so it's got to be worth whatever, right? But yeah. <laughs> Who would double cross? That's not the whole point of this book. <laughs> right? That being said, though, Meryl does take um, a good point, you know? She's like, bitch, like, how can you even be happy with this talus? Like, why are you, why are you even doing this? And he's like, well, eh, you know, I don't necessarily like it, but, you know, she's my queen. Gotta do what the queen says. And yeah. Meryl, boss bitch. She's she not my mine. queen. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. So, yeah, you do get kind of a nice thing. Because, like you say, once, you know, the horses are all and people are start recovering and Talos comes after Harry right away and he's knocked on his ass or whatever, right? And, yeah, she does the cool sort of, you know, like her machete and her axe and does the catch the sword thing and, (laughs) you know, basically just comes in kind of all badass right there, right, giving him his chance to recover and stuff like that. We haven't seen, other than that, Meryl's just some changeling you know what i mean but it's like i guess she's got something going for her apparently she does somewhat know how to use this axe and this machete it's a pretty badass moment it's a pretty badass moment yeah and then exactly right where he's like i don't understand changeling like why are you fighting she's like why are you fucking (laughs) and 
But exactly, yeah. yeah. Not my queen. Unfortunately, Slate does recover and attacks Meryl with his sword and impales her. Underhanded yeah. fucking psycho sleazebag. Yeah. Which is Slate right from the start. Yeah. There's no ifs, yeah, ands, no. or buts. He gets her good. But nonetheless, yeah. Just, yeah, I get, right? Like, there's, there's. I'll stab in the ribs and go up. There's, Ooh. there's no fair in war, I get. But yeah, it's, just, it's a nasty move. And it's, I know. And, and the, just, you know, like, exactly, like, shows it up under. And then with a twist and pop. And it's just oh. like, oh, God, butcher, no. Oh. Yeah, butcher, what the fuck? Right. How to ensure death. Oh, Mm -hmm. God. Yeah, right? Like, you know this is just a nasty fatal. Like, there's no coming back from this one. That's you. Yeah, Yeah, so Meryl drops. Impalement itself, but, you know, you've guaranteed that with a twist. Just kind of, yeah, slice a few things up and around. and and Not great. Maximum damage, no. Not how I'd want to go. No. No. No, No, of all the ways I think I'm going to go, I I don't think it's going to be that That one's pretty low on the list. Talking (laughs) about your bullying and stuff like that, right? Like, Slate and me. For for Slate to get the final kill, too? Yeah, like, that was one of the biggest reasons how they ended up in the first place is because he wouldn't fucking leave them alone. And they, you know, it was fun just picking on them and torturing them and whatever, you know what I mean? So they specifically tried to get away from that. So, yeah, just more... You know, insult to injury, whatever that that slate gets this. This is slate in a nutshell too. So of course he's going to take the cheap shot. Certainly and, been set up well and, for that moment. Well, right, exactly. Win at all costs, kind of a thing. And when it's Harry taking the cheap shots and winning at all costs, we're like, yeah, dude, whatever it takes, right? But it's great when it's your man. It's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not so. You know, it's like censorship. It's like you know, you don't want anybody to stop what you're saying. So if you stop what everybody else is saying, but, but exactly, right? I'm like, mm, if you don't want to be censored, I guess you can't censor anyone else. So there you go. It's um just messy and icky. And and Fix does not take kindly to it. No. Fix. <laughs> and I have to, oh, I, I kept wanting to bug Jess because it was actually just um, in one of the, the last ones um, where Harry, one of the last episodes we released when Harry's coming out of the mother's house. And we were talking about how he gets to the conclusion that Korok is the unicorn and Talos is Grom and da 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 da. And Jessica's like, oh, he picks up on these like specific. Um, sort of Same descriptive words, words and things like that. And now it's driving me nuts because I've been listening and listening to these chapters and there's one thing where it's like, or I'm like, Harry and Fix are the same person or something like that because he uses something to like describe them. And now I'm like, damn it, I don't remember. Oh, maybe it's the dandelion. Do you think he says me that that he's like he's described Toot as having like this little puff of like dandelion hair, and he describes Fix as having like this little puff of like blonde dandelion hair, and then Lee is like, get a haircut, you look like a dandelion, and I'm like, aha, Harry is really Toot, is really Fix, is really. <laughs> It was really funny at the time. Mm. When I was oh, wow. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's to indicate some of... Uh, <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> some job prospects coming yeah. up in the boys' future. <laughs> right. Yeah, Harry's going to turn into it. Yeah, the gonna boys' go, is... Ha- Harry's going to go from a, a, a six and a half foot tall wizard to like a six and a half inch tall pixie. <laughs> As you see Tutu getting bigger and bigger throughout the series, it's like, wait a second, Jess, have you lost height? <laughs> wait, spoilers. <laughs> But yeah, there you go. It's just on the... <laughs> I will say, I will throw in now, since you brought it up, that this is not the first time that Dresden has used descriptive words for characters that we'll meet later on in the books. This was, like, the fastest he's revealed. Yeah. But there are people in descriptions that we got in book, like, one, two, three, that we're going to get again in, like, book six, seven, eight, nine, ten, thirteen. Yeah. It's just, it's just, it's really, because I think, I think that was one of them, but I can't remember for sure if that was, like, the one, because I feel almost more like there was, like, a specific thing. And I just, I kept one now. I'm, like, Something really mad up. at myself that I didn't, uh... Write it down. Yeah, I oh kept well. meaning to. I was always, like, driving and things like that, and I always kept meaning to make sure, and I was like, damn it, where was that other connection of where it was, like, you know, the exact, you know, something like, yeah, I used to describe him and then somebody else later, but anyways. Dresden is just everybody. Every character is Dresden. <laughs> that's all you need to know right. yeah. in the end. So that's the gonna nice, be the big reveal. It's like, Andy wears the egg. Our audience has read it, even if you guys haven't. So... Is that the Martian thing? The Weir? Andy Weir? He, he wrote the egg, and he wrote the Martian. And the Project Hail Mary. Project Hail Mary. I didn't, I, I didn't know the egg was another book. I've heard Project Hail Mary and the Martian and stuff. But anyways. Okay. Alrighty. So, so Dresden is now pissed. Well, so the nice thing is, as sad as it is that Meryl died, it, every time someone dies, Harry really is like, boost adrenaline. Let's go. Now so you've... 
So as as much as I'm sorry you had to die, Meryl, but this is what we needed she's for Harry. She's not dead yet. I know, but we're not there oh, yet, Mom. I'm not dead yet. We think she's dead, okay? <laughs> Cut that, okay? Cut that part, Tanzan. No, but yes, we know that she's basically been mortally injured or whatever, yes. Um, and he does. I, 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 okay, I get it. But again, much as you mock, like, the bad guys for their, like, overlord villain speeches and stuff like that, you know... I'm like, you do the same thing. Like, Slate's all busy taking down Meryl. And Harry's got to jump up and go, Slate! And get his attention. Slate, you murdering bastard. Make sure all your attention is over here on me so that when I go to do something against you, you're well prepared to block my attention. I'm like, I guess. Whatever. We don't. not thinking this. very straight no, at this you point. Don't. He's and just I, seen red. Yeah, and I do understand that. And, you know, again, same thing in that moment. Sure, I'd probably be. But it's just, again, like, I'm the newbie. I don't normally do this. This is not my everyday job is to get in fights and kill things and do magical whatever. Once, even at this point, even though we're only book four, we're still, relatively speaking, early into Dresden's, you know, career and big cases. I'm like, you've been in enough scrapes by now. You know, just fucking shoot him in the back of the head and move on. Why are you, you know what I mean? But he doesn't. Thanks so, for good drama. It is part of a yeah. strategy, though, to, you know, get the attention on yourself so they stop attacking the people around you. But obviously, yes, if he just snuck up behind him and, like, shot him in the back of the head, that would have been... Yeah, I mean, basically, yeah, that's what he did. He's busy, yeah, or, you know, eviscerating Meryl or whatever. He could have just taken him out in that moment, but I don't know. Listen, whether it's in if Harry whether it's shut the fuck up, it'd be a lot shorter books. <laughs> well, there is this too. We've said that before. As dramatic well. <laughs> effect. Dramatic effect. <laughs> yes. So yes, like, you're not gonna win an Emmy or a Grammy bastard. without a speech, okay? <laughs> right. Right. All right. So Dresden calls out for a thunder spell and attacks Slate with it. And the smell knocks everyone back, but Talos, who has managed to pull up, just fuck her. <laughs> he pulled a guard up in the right time. Yeah. Again, as soon as he's like Slate, he's like, uh oh, here we go again, and he does his little mumbo jumbo. But yeah, like, and this is again, you know, nice little callback to to Stormfront and whatever, right? He just reaches down into that storm. It's like, wait a minute, I can use the storm for power. This is a stupid like, idea, but I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I am standing on the storm this time. I don't even have to like suck it down all the way to Earth. I can just like suck it up through my feet here. And but yes, does a nice little thunder lightning spell thing, and it hits him, and it shocks him, and it. You know, but it doesn't put him down for the count. Right. So, yeah, so, so, yeah, so he reaches down to the storm, whatever, lost everything. So it does kind of, like you say, it, it doesn't put Slate down for the count, but it, you know, like you say, knocks him off his feet for the moment, and of course not Talus. So he's reached, so Dresden reaching for the blasting rod, um, and, you know, fires off a quick shot that he, of course, you know, just, it doesn't even bother to gesture decide at this point. He's like, yeah, 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 whatever, you can't touch me. He goes and, and, kicks yeah he kicks his blasting rod or staff away or whatever right and of course you know he's all deafened from his own spell or whatever and he just gets his hearing back of course nicely just in time to be able to hear Talos say and so it ends and Harry of course gets another great line and he's like damn right it does look down and again this is where everybody pauses and looks and talks and does stuff you know I'm like again Talos you could have just ended it all right here but Whatever, I get it too. I mean, you're right there in that moment. I would have looked, I'm sure. And lo and behold, while he has, you know, disarmed him from his staff and blasting rod, which apparently Harry somewhat intentionally intended for him to do, sort of made it obvious that he was so, you know, the old sleight of hand, the... Dis- oh no, my blasting rod, what'll I do now? Yeah, the, the distract and, you know, look over here. Uh, yeah, he's pulled out his big ass gun. Yes. Which again, Boom! Boom. His big old dirty hairy special. And, and, and not only does he shoot him with it, he beats him with it. With the metal part. Yeah. Starts he clubbing, clubbing him with the gun. Him. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, so he takes it, so he catches him and does knock him off his feet. Because it is like a high caliber, you know, big impact sort of a thing. But because of his armor and all of that. And, and again, it's it's good because he says the, the steel didn't even like rip through. The, so it just wasn't enough. In the substance of this bullet, or he's got extra special fancy armor that is even somewhat repellent to or will withstand or hold up against steel or whatever. Um, but nonetheless, it does knock him off his feet, and before he can get a chance to do anything else, Harry just boots him in the face with his big, you know, combat boots or whatever he's wearing this time around. 
And then, yeah, exactly, just starts pistol whip, like, just beating the crap out of him <laughs> with this big-ass gun. And that is enough. That he cannot recover from in Yikes. time. And, yeah, I mean, those are beating in just exactly the power of the steel against it. So, yeah, kind of makes a bit of a mess there, too. Uh, again, doesn't kill him because he's a stupid freaking she, but... Well, and Slate attacks, despite having a broken arm with a spear hitting Dresden and, and takes away that gun. So, is this where is and his arms arm himself broken with yet, or is this yeah. where he breaks it? Hanging uselessly at his side. It yeah. does already, okay, yes. Yeah, so and, and does not actually do a villain speech at this point, just, <laughs> just goes for the shot. And again, right, this is where Slate, yeah, does not always waste a lot of time. Again, same thing, he just fucking snuck up behind Meryl and... Um, and takes those cheap shots. Takes those cheap shots. And same thing, right? He's like, I'm not going to waste time here. Like, obviously, Dresden can... Ca- like, you know, he's been... You know, he... Uh, he. I mean, not that that was part of the, the fairy plan, but I'm sure they heard about it. But, you know, he got away from the friggin' open attack in the park in the opening chapter. You know, survived the Walmart with all kinds of different types. Of, you know, there was a gunman. There was a mind fog. There was magical beasts. There was ogres, you know manages to, you know, da 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 and, you know, get away from Aurora and her quicksand, and, you know, he's just like, okay, fucking this guy's just gotta go down. Like, there's no more dicking around, no more. But yeah, uh, Slate is finally getting the point here, like, there's no point in dicking around and wasting and whatever, right? Like, you just gotta put him down, put him down fast, and without all the drama and the chances and the, you know, gutter done, because obviously this guy does not go down easily and has managed to survive everything so far. So for good or bad, I mean, you know, now we're getting to the direct point, but now we're also like, well, don't do that. We don't actually want him dead, Slate. I know we, like, mock the villain's speech, but we like that you do it because it gives our good guy time to exactly. do stuff. Exactly. <laughs> well, at least fortunately in this case, Fix comes <laughs> and attacks Fix. the hell out of Slate with that monkey wrench. Fucking fix. So this is to a, town. So this really, I mean, it's kind of funny when you stop and think about it. So here we have this big fairy battle, right? This is what they're going up. You know, they have to climb a magical uh, stairway of like congealed starlight. They're up on the quote unquote clouds. I mean, it's, you know, somewhere in the never, never. It's not necessarily, but it's effectively, you know, as far as Harry and them can process, you know, they're basically just up in the clouds. Um, but, you know, and everything, I mean, you've got two extremely powerful magical sides, you've got wizard, you've got shape-shifting werewolves, you've got, and when it comes right down to it, it's fucking physical brutality. Meryl's getting gutted with his sword, he's beating the crap out of Talos with his gun and shooting at him. Fix is attacking with a big ass fucking monkey. You know what I mean? I'm like, none of the spells, they can all counter each other's spells. They're all blowing stuff off. They're all, but this is basically what it comes down to. It's, it's. Harry said it before, and no one expects a wizard to have a gun. No less than the fairies who eat, breed, eat breathe and sleep magic. Yeah, and exactly. And that's the thing is that it's all coming off of whatever. I mean, there's, you know, certain advantage, you know, like, again, he's got the advantage of the werewolves being werewolves as opposed to just a bunch of other humans up there with him, you know? And, like, um, you know, Billy will make a point here shortly that they had an advantage over the horses because horses are, even if they're, you know, fey horses. They're not they're sentient. St- yeah, their horses are horses. They were still scared of, of the wolves and they could attack at that. And, like you say, the horses, the same thing as why his wall works. The horse themselves don't have defenses against it, right? Um, but, you know, as much as, yeah, like, their armor and their, their abilities and Dresden can block this and he can bring up that you know I'm like basically war is war is war it comes down to the same thing is that you basically just have to brutally bludgeon each other and just kill death you know it doesn't really matter by any means possible by any means possible and the fact that how you're willing to get there that fast too you know I mean like like Fix and Meryl and them weren't fighters per se I mean they were like survivors and I mean I think there's a huge difference between you know, like a schoolyard fist fight against bullies and this all out, you know, war and stuff like that that they're going through now, right? And whereas, you know, Meryl, I'm sure, has been in a few scrapes in her time, you know, fixed not so much, right? He's described the entire way as just being kind of a small, mousy, quiet, nervous sort of guy, right? Like, you know, you know that he's essentially, you know, the coward, if not easily into. Well, I was going to say, I mean, there's cowardly, like, like Slate is cowardly. In the sense of, of not dishonorable either, but no integrity or whatever, you right. know what I mean? Whereas it's it's not, so, you know, Fix is an honorable coward, I guess, is what I'm trying to, you know what I mean? 
like it's just fair he's just he's not a very imposing person he doesn't have a lot of imposing skills he's been put you know what i mean like it's just naturally he's just like what the fuck am i gonna do against all of this or whatever right fix is very morally good yeah morally good and just you know like you say just just circumstances and whatever you know the misfortune of being a changeling the misfortune of not really fitting in with winter the force you know he's not a force of power he's not a bully he's not he's just a dude <laughs> although i shouldn't say entirely morally good because he does beat the winter well Mike and this death. is what i mean right this is where you get <laughs> all of a hey, sudden revenge when, is a bitch. <laughs> when push comes to shove he's not taking it right and especially you know and good and, men do horrible things in war right it's like that Doctor Who episode. What is it when a oh. when a good man goes to war, but he's like, there's the beginning of that. Right. Oh, you that. should be worried when a good man goes to war. Or whatever. Damn it! I'm gonna have to before demons run when a good man goes to war. Uh, night will fall and the dark will rise when a good man goes to war. Demons run, but count the cost. The battle's won, but the child is lost. That was the Doctor Who one. Is it just from there? Quote by Stephen Moffat: Demons run when a good man goes to war. Yeah, I guess. Fucking Stephen. I know, right? <laughs> of all the people to quote. The anger of a I don't want to like his writing, but I, I do. I don't want to like it either. It's just, uh, oh, fuck. Damn it. Yeah, see, Madam Kavarian, the anger of a good man is not a problem. Good men have too many rules. Doctor, good men don't need rules. Today is the day to find out why I have so many. <laughs> but yes, exactly. And that's... Um, but yeah, so this is the thing, you know, Fix, who's kind of been like, what do we do? What do we do? And like, okay, I want to help. You know, like, again, he's got that sense of morality, compassion. You know, he's like, Lily's in trouble. I got to go help. Meryl's going. I'm going. Like, I don't know he what the fuck is going on. He's fiercely loyal to his friends. Fiercely loyal to his friends. Thank you. Yeah. And it's kind of funny. Like, you a know. A little bit. He's never had his own direction, but he's always wanted to be the one to help or whatever. So Meryl's a little bit more on the go, cut and yeah, whatever. Yeah, he, he's not the leader. He's yeah. not you know, the natural born commanding presence that will get people. But he's like, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do, but I'll do it. Like, yeah. Like, Some people what, are born you know. to support. Yeah, exactly. Right. right? Like, that's the thing is, he's fiercely loyal. He's there to stand up for his friends, stick up for his friends, do what he can, want, you know, whatever that may be. And it's like, you know, there's got to be some, because like he say, he hauls out this friggin' toolbox and that Harry basically says looks like heavy as fuck, but he's like just you know, lugs it up onto his shoulder like he does it all the time and da 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 and then exactly like, you know, at the start of this, right, he plunks it down and pulls out this, you know, big old monkey and that's the thing too that I love. It's just like this big giant like plumber's pipe. It's not like some just like a wrench, you know what I mean? <laughs> like it's big and those things, if you've never seen or held one, like Who who killed uh Colonel Mustard? There with a pipe wrench. <laughs> right. In the library possibly or the ballroom or the conservatory <laughs> but <laughs> they have been known to kill before <laughs> they have been known to kill before and will again <laughs> and will again and i have actually seen like three four foot long pipe wrenches that way they can get tens intense. of pounds of like yeah right so i mean even like you know, I remember my dad had, like, a half-decent, maybe, like, I don't know, a foot long or something that was... And that was, like, you would fucking hurt to get belted with that. But, yeah, this this thing that... So, yeah, basically, um, Fix has reached his breaking point. He's now at the limit of he knows what, what does it take to oh. get Fix to cross that line, to lose his cool, to not, you know, to overcome his fears and cowardice and what-ifs. And fuck the violence part of it. It's like, fix fucking breaks when, like, he goes to lift up Meryl and is like, help me. That part is like, oh, that, now yeah. I'm broken. Meryl, like, help, help me. So, yeah, and exactly. And right, again, you could just, like, Butcher, I just feel, is very good at with, you know, simple descriptions, simple words. But you feel that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's no big, huge, you know, explanation of, you know, um describing fix and you know it's He's very good weird. at laying the groundwork for who you're supposed to like and who you're supposed to hate well, so when yeah, someone gets a monkey wrench simply. monkey wrench to the face you're like fuck yeah and when somebody collapses and is like help me you're like oh but yeah like i say right, and that's right. all it is like it just all he has to say is you know fix is trying to pick up meryl and is like help me and you immediately can feel and that devastated. intensity and that that devastation yeah exactly right you know, Harry goes to, right, Harry's like, shit, because he has still just been knocked around by Talos and by um, 
slate and a little bit his own spell because we always know, you know, that that takes some both. blowback. Yeah, yeah. There's the blowback plus there's just the the loss of energy. Yeah, the the physical output and everything. You know, the toll that it takes on Harry that way, right? But he is a little stunned and concussed and whatever, right? And he's trying to get up to go help, and Billy pushes past him, and right. So you're oh. like, oh yeah, you still got these guys all look great, and you know, again, getting that arm under and helping him up and stuff like that, you know. But werewolves perform. Uh, the werewolves creating their protective barrier around them. Right. Yes, oh. right, all forming up to sort of block them in. And but then they check on Meryl, who insists on them checking on Harry instead. I know, like, oh. and she's like, no, 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 I'm okay, but yeah, you gotta save the wizard. Like, if he goes down, none of us get out of here, right? right? Which, again, is very true, but we're not, you know, again, it's great that she's thinking this far ahead in it, because I don't know that anybody else really, I mean, again, that's, but it, you, know, you, you can't sure help but like her more because of that moment. Like, no, not me, him. him. Yeah, exactly. Like, selfless. Her exact quote is like, uh, yeah. Seat of the wizard. If he goes down, none of us are going home. Which is what I just <laughs> said. Oh, did you? I wasn't listening to you. <laughs> Obviously. Cut mine. <laughs> <laughs> I just heard you talking about <laughs> That's hilarious. the general. I didn't hear you quote it exactly. That's hilarious. But okay. <laughs> but yes. Yeah. It's fine. Okay. Oh, you know what? No. <laughs> Cut moms. <laughs> <laughs> she always gets the quotes. Fuck her. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's that selfless moment. And it's that, oh, maybe she's not because she's not down and out yet, you know, and she's still like, no, no, I, I'm okay, we need to. But exactly just that realization that, you know, yeah, if he doesn't come out, yeah, yeah whatever else is going to go down in this thing, we're not going to just walk away from it or whatever. Like, he is our only hope to get in and out. Whether he stops it or not, he's our ticket out of here kind of a thing, and we're hoping it's because he stops it. But, um, yeah, but another very, just very descriptive. There's a lot of, like, bone crunchy. Like, again, when when... Fix goes to town on Slate. You're just like, oh. No. I do like this one moment, though, when I think that there's a miscommunication between Billy and Meryl when Billy's trying to talk to Harry and he's like, you're good, man? Like, and Harry's like, yeah, yeah, just give me a minute. And Billy's like, right, we're gonna have to run for it, Harry. There's more fight coming towards us. And Meryl is like, we can't run. Aurora still has Lily. And I really feel like it's like, Billy's like, we're gonna have to run towards them now and get this problem solved quick. Mm. And Meryl is more like, we can't run away and abandon now. We got this far. Maybe, I, I, yeah, okay. I guess it could be. I mean, I sort of get where Billy, like Billy, I think, maybe is talking a little bit more practically, like, you know, this is backing well. I feel like Billy's are. like, we got to hustle if we're going to do this. And yeah. Meryl's like, what do you mean, run away? And I took it to mean, like, you know, the miscommunication there where, where Meryl is like, what do you mean we're giving up? And Billy's like, no, 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 we just got to hustle and, like, get this shit over with. Like, we're taking too many hits. If we're going to do this, we got to do it. Yeah. Right. Not let's abandon everything now, right? I don't think Billy wants to abandon. He's the alpha. He knows how important this shit is and why they're here. And I think for the most part, as much as Billy can be <laughs> crazily more rational than Harry, uh, he still fully is with the Harry fight. He gets like, we're here to protect people, save people. Everyone here signed up for this shit. Same investment. Let's do what the fuck we came here to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't think he's like suggesting that they abandon ship. I think he is just like, we got to get to this. Yeah, maybe. It's, just, yeah. it's, yeah, it is kind of hard to, and I mean, again, like you say, rush about blah, 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 blah. It's, it's, yeah, I'm not quite sure. I never really thought about it too much over one way or the other of whether it was a miscommunication or you know yeah they're talking about the same thing and just whatever but but either way yeah exactly right it's like they don't really have time to figure out much of a game plan or anything because you know Billy's like talk later here they come and you know right. blurs back enter right. Maeve enter right. Maeve I Ugh. love that so you see a bunch of winter she warriors come up from the, wither, the the river and start taking out these summer warriors, and this one winter warrior just freezes this opponent and it shatters them. Right. <laughs> Which, of course, like, turns from, out like, to be made. From, like, the inside but... out, yeah. <laughs> Not just, like, freeze them like, like Mr. Cold Freeze Ray or anything either. It's, it's yeah, it's like you can see this guy starts this, to... The also... <laughs> wonderful brutality Ooh. of it. Yeah, oh. gross. I, uh, I... This is how you know, like... I just said, enter Maeve, and it's very much like a play where it's like, every like five seconds, somebody's coming out from stage left, and they've got like a new person to meet, and you're like, fuck, can we just get to the climax already? Like, how many costumes are going to come out here? Yeah, right. And it almost doesn't feel like when you're going through the book, but this one battle's made you realize just how many motherfuckers we met in this book, because it's like every five feet, it's like, here's Lloyd, here's Talos, here's Maeve. It's like, god damn it, can we not get ten feet down this battleground yeah, without having to fucking meet someone? No, that's a problem. <laughs> Even the next writer that, that they mention here, another winter writer entity, uh, and it sounds like it's a gen, the, the, the green one, mm -hmm. so it's like, okay. 
Okay. Yeah, I, I, you're, Jenny you're right. Green Tifa. Yeah, I don't think <laughs> Every she's one of the one. Ri- Yeah, she wasn't one of the riders, but she's with them because I think they knock somebody into the river or something mm-hmm. and yeah. she sucks them pulls, down. Pulls under. a summer warrior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, exactly right. It's it's and again, it 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 is. It's this. You know the enemy of your enemy, and and you know Vader turning in the whole right. Here's Maeve, who fucking sucks and is a psychopath, and you know again has been half the problem because but if she doing wasn't, them a solid at this point, it's doing them a solid, right? If she wasn't torturing Lily and Meryl and letting you know Lloyd do it, yeah, all. once for all that evil stuff, she'd be great. She'd be great, right? You know, and and but that's it. But at the same time. Yeah, she's quote unquote on his side right now. You know, it's like this is still coming up, and she's there still to sort of save the day in that moment, and even out the odds again for them a little bit, which they desperately needed right now because, you know, and again in this, like I, Harry says, as, as anybody else in any other, you know, show media, whatever, um, you know, n- no, no plan survives the opening strike or whatever, you know, no battle goes as, right? So it's like, they knew they were going up into a war, but again, until they actually were hip deep in it, you know, you don't, well, how are you going to react? What are you going to be able to pull out, right? So, the, you know, everyone's, but now the wolves are like, okay, now we know what they're coming at us with, you know, and they're like, okay, now we know these mortals are going to, like, try and bash our brains in with a fucking monkey wrench. Monkey wrench, like, okay, let, you know. Or they are gone. Or they're gone, or what, what right? You know what I mean? It's like everybody, right? So that's it. It's that first one. They sort of went rushing in there, and you're like, oh, shit. Okay, 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 okay. I, I, I get what's going on now. Regroup right? and like make a strategy. Yeah, right? Exactly, you know? And they don't really have that opportunity because now they are all dazed and battered and what the fuck. So, yeah, it's again, really impeccable time. And, and impeccable because Maeve was waiting for her point. I would have helped out sooner, but that would have been a fair fight. And I avoid those. <laughs> Your godmother sends her greetings. <laughs> Which I get, and I totally agree with, but at the same time, it's like, your side's getting their ass kicked, though. Like, hello. <laughs> I but do love... There's uh, the sadistic side. There, Right. I do love that, like, after she gives her advice and sends them on their way and they start to go, she's just like, hi, Lloyd. We should talk. Yeah, it's like, right. good, good. Fuck you, Lloyd. Right. So, yeah. Apparently, Fix did not, you know, completely bash all of his brains out. But pretty darn close. But pretty darn close. <laughs> well, again, right? I mean, just, yeah, breaking his other wrist and just, like, wailing on him like that. Like, he just... And again... You bring a human to a fairy I fight. See, I Right? And, I, I, and again, I can see that fury and that anger, right? Like, I mean, I've never gotten to the point where I've actually, like, beat the shit out of somebody in that sense. But damn if I wanted to. But damn if I... You know, I have had that one or two moments... <laughs> moment where you you do feel that impassioned and you're ready to just doesn't usually involve those scenarios remind me to tell you about the bus driver yesterday (laughs) i want that bitch to die (laughs) yeah (laughs) this was dumb um but yeah exactly ruined my whole day (laughs) i'm not yeah as these things do. So they start running upriver. So yes, Maeve's so got that defended. Maeve, least. yeah. Maeve she's done something. Of, she's done something. She's held off the immediate. So clears a path like, okay, now you guys can get going again. So yeah, he can see Aurora at the top of the hill with... Uh, yeah, Corrick's placing Lily upon the stone table. Unfortunately, Meryl's not going to make it. She's like... Run without me. It'll be okay. You promised, right, Terry? You're going to take care of... Well, yeah, they all start going up, and you hear the Lily and realize that, you know, wait, Meryl doesn't sound too good. <laughs> Meryl doesn't sound strong and imposing, and, like, she's... Because I think she tried... Uh, I don't know if it's here just before, because cause I think that's it. Maybe it was when she first started getting up again and, and fixes like Meryl is like I thought you were hurt bad and she's like I don't know most of it's not mine and Dresden's like yeah, I totally knew she was lying and here you can see there's here's the the truth of that lie coming out you know oh. that like she's not nearly as good as she tried to to pretend she was and uh and yeah fixes all you know she's like get her fix save her you take her home and he's like ah! but uh yeah, and then, I don't know, I, I, you know, she's like, turns to Harry, and she's like, you'll help, and he's like, you paid for it, and I'm like, yes, you did, and I get, like, I, I don't know if I like that line or not, you know, sorry, me, which one? The, he's, she's like, help him, and, and Harry is like, you paid for it, I'm like, well, you're gonna help them no matter what, like, you know, especially here and now, in the middle of this scenario, you're not gonna leave anybody right. 
to... I could see it be come across as a dick thing to say, right? But at the same time, I could understand it as being, like, extra reassuring if that's, like... If you're talking to someone who really deals in money, that could be more reassuring for them to be like, yeah, you've paid for it, which for them could be, I, like, yeah, the highest of the highest promises. You know, and maybe, like, in this case, right, where she's like, I don't know where your loyalties lie or wherever, and he's like, no, you hired me to do this job. I'll see your job through, which is saving Lily. Like, whatever, I know. But it's just that, like... That's but, what I mean. yeah, I'm, like, Meryl's just, not the kind of person that I feel like needs the money talk more than anything else right? yeah it's just and again i don't know i'm like again maybe just one of those dumb things like you know I men say, are talking and you have to roll your eyes no matter what they say maybe yeah. i don't know or like <laughs> you know like same thing right when it doesn't this stick. is an all-woman podcast for a reason. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh some days more than others um so harry tells fix to stay with meryl and they all had rush the stone table <laughs> Yeah, and she sends, Aurora sends Cork down to meet them. So Harry very quickly is like, ooh, this guy's big bruiser. Don't close with him. <laughs> and then Billy's like, check that. <laughs> right. Ruff, ruff, ruff. Um, tells, tells Billy to distract him. Yeah, he's like, he's going to stomp you into oatmeal. Like, just, yeah. So, um, so yeah, everybody scatters, does their thing. Harry mm-hmm. makes it. And Aurora starts using the unraveling and Lily she at this point. Right, she's been put down. She immediately right. is slapping this thing on her and going to work. <laughs> and, and Dresden blasts Aurora with a wind spell that snatches the unraveling from within Aurora's <laughs> grasp. I caught it, stuck my tongue out at Aurora and yelled, meet me, and ran like hell. <laughs> and Marsters does a fantastic roadrunner here, too. It's <laughs> awesome. He does it really well in the audiobook. <laughs> That's like, I love hearing him. I'll have to listen I, to that. I Oh, I'm, I mean, so, I'm so guilty of not listening to any of the audiobooks. Like, oh, no. I start to listen to them you and I fall read? asleep. Like a loser? I just fucking read. Oh, I just, see, I, I even have a Kindle. That's oh. why you're so much further behind. You do it while you don't listen to the radio. Have you ever seen me make my notes? I actually put the book up on one screen here, and I put the notes up on the other screen here, and I write my notes while I'm reading. Which is good and fantastic, and why you have all of those notes, and why I forget to get things jotted down, but you still absorb a little bit. You listen to it while you're showering, you listen to it while you're driving to work, and then you just... See, that's your guys' job. My my job is the, I don't remember any of this, so this isn't my instantaneous reaction as I'm reading it. It does kind of work for that way, But unfortunately, it takes me ever forever to do it but it's um yeah it's the whole it is convenient for me to just listen at work <laughs> right <laughs> yeah rather than sit there with a book open i don't have the attention span for that i would be like working and then just stop and just be like listening and then oh, we yeah, fall asleep see, <laughs> i need to be like moving when i listen to an audiobook and doing something i can't just listen to an audiobook right. while i sit at home stuck my tongue out at aurora and yelled meep, meep, and ran like hell <laughs> Like, he does a really Maybe. good, like, he sounds like a fucking that, little car horn. That was good. <laughs> and ran like hell. And ran like hell. <laughs> Unfortunately, Aurora throws her own spell back at Dresden and retreats. I know, right? like, like, ha ha, I got it. <laughs> I will say, though, she, in this moment, Aurora yells, damn thee, wizard. First time I ever read it, I heard, damn these wizards. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, that better. Too, right? <laughs> it's like it's not just Harry. It's like motherfucking wizards. <laughs> Always with wizards. <laughs> Fucker. So oh, it man. is a great. Just you know, again, Jeff and everything is getting really dark and heavy, and people are dying. Just that touch of levity to. Whew, okay, come on, Harry. Let's, this is why we love him. Lighten it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, this is okay. Okay, it's all gonna be fine. Harry's making roadrunner noises. Like we, we can get out of this. Right. <laughs> Harry, this isn't a Looney Tune. <laughs> <laughs> Well, unfortunately, not only does she throw her own spell back, but she uses another spell to create this huge, thick hedge of thorns. Yeah, so she pins him down with his wind. Like, first kind of knocks him, he goes rolling down the hill, and he's just about to get up, and he's like, poof, slam back against the ground, right? And he's like, trying, cannot. And then she just walks over and, like, rips it out of his hand again or whatever. Listen, you can't have a character named Aurora without having some fucking briar wood around. Well, oh, there is point. that. There is good that. Yeah, thank you. Thank wow. you. Yes. Um, yeah. But um, but then exactly, and then she's like, "No more interruptions." Exactly, and tries to put this big wall up between them all around the the top of the hill or whatever here where she's right. So he's still trying to get out of this, and he's like realizing he can't just bully. Like he's he's. It, it's not going to let up. So, okay, he's got to do something, but he can't just blast at it because he's just going to blast himself apart with it or whatever if he just hammers at it, right? Like, with so many things. Um, so he starts trying. He's like, okay, I'm going to have to, you know, whew, take a second, calm down. Like, I got to lockpick this thing, not dynamite it or whatever, right? 
And while he's trying to take a moment and collect himself, all hell is breaking loose, has broken loose, is long since Actively broke loose. Actively broken. <laughs> you know, like, hell has been there for a while. And, right, he starts to hear everything else. You know, he hears, he hears fake, like, Harry, 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 help! And the werewolves are, like, screaming, and he's like, I can't concentrate on, like, oh, fuck, right? So he's desperately, like, needs to hold it together to get this. Yeah, and he's all desperately wants to just, you know, rush in there and, and help them and save them, but he can't rush in and help them until he saves himself, but he can't save himself because he's too busy about wanting to run in. Yeah. <laughs> And all of a sudden, here comes... Yeah, he doesn't get much of a chance to do anything because another mounted she warrior starts to attack. So, yeah, all right. So again, the other one we'd kind of seen peripherally that hadn't done anything yet, um, but they're um, riding up and leveling the spear at his head, and he's all, wait, wait, no, no, and brings it, slam, or drives it down at his unprotected throat. This concludes our episode 9.21. Meet me. Thank you for listening. You can find us online at freeflowrambling.com and macanellies.ca. There we have links to our other podcasts, social media, and other fun tidbits. Please subscribe if you like what you're hearing, and please consider supporting us through Patreon to keep the magic alive and to see more content. We are Free Flow Rambling. Conjure by it at your own risk. 